word is inspired by the Holy Ghost. And every word that he speaks has enough power to set you free, to deliver you, and to give you wisdom above all that. So now they're telling me we can only read this because it doesn't go along with their doctrine that says you can live whatever you want to. You don't have to sin. And you can't sin anymore. Well, <laughs> hallelujah. There is a word in this book called repent. Yeah. And it's for your goodness. Now, parents, how many of you have perfect children? Do you love them all? Do they never need correction? The Lord says whom he chastens is the one he loves. And it's a son. If he doesn't chasten you, you're a bastard indeed. That's a straight up word here. So the people that are preaching and teaching that you can't sin anymore after you get saved, does that come from a full counsel no. of the word of God? But it is a word that will open the doors and bring hundreds of people in. And why is that? Because they never have to change. They never have to live and be convicted under the power of the Holy Ghost to serve God. And that message is the most prevailing message that I know about. And it's going everywhere. And apparently, America's full of it because it's a satisfying, it's a very satisfying, it's a very happy message. But the Word, the Spirit of God that I know, He brings conviction and it's precious and it can change you anytime, any place, anywhere. You could be in worship. And you could be going through something. And the Spirit of God could touch you and say, Precious change. And God could do the work right where you're worshiping Him because the Spirit of God is that precious. Amen. You don't even have to be brought up. You don't have to be pointed out. He can do it that sweet. But if you don't believe, how many people believe that their children don't ever need to be corrected? We had neighbors that grew up in the Peace Corps. And their little two little boys rode to school with us. And their little boys kicked my little boys beat them, kicked my husband in the shins, and I remember there came a day where we didn't couldn't carpool anymore because those two little boys were creating havoc at my house, and their mother did not believe in spanking or discipline. And she would talk to me and said, you're ruining the spirit of my children, I thought. <laughs> well, those children grew up, and they defied every authority that we could imagine at school, and they grew up, and they became men, and they had a hard time in areas, and why is that? They never understood. There was an authority and an order. Right. And there's a godliness and a holiness because they were taught something different. We didn't ruin their little spirits. The Word of God is so precious because He's training us for righteousness' sake. And there is correction and it's precious. And we love it. The fool will not be corrected. But the wise person receives correction because it's a blessing to be loved. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you're in a church? Or there's some correction. How many people have ever been corrected in the ministry besides me? How many people have ever been corrected? Because there was something that was taking you somewhere and hardening you to the truth, but that was going to take you to destruction. Do you understand that I correct my children because I love them? Am I spanking the neighborhood children? No. There's some of them I like to spank. I would love to spank them. I would love to spank them. But, but, but if their parents... <laughs> If I, but what about my nieces and nephews? What about my grandchildren? How much do I love them? Am I going to let them sass, disrespect, kick me in the shins? <laughs> we're in Sweden. I kid you not. And we got this precious. We're in Sweden with uh, Rama, Sweden, and Rama Bolivia. We're there, and Sweden's a socialized, modern country. Thinks that American is uh, back country, ignorant, and can't do anything. That's what Sweden thinks, because they're liberal and advanced, right? European. Okay, so we're in there, and we've got these ministry, heads of these ministries, and we're visiting a family, and there's a little five-year-old on her bicycle. And there's a pastor's wife, who's the head, right? She rides her bicycle, and she slams into her knees as hard as she can. Okay, and everybody goes, oh, no, no, no. Well, the old child backs up that tricycle, and she slams her can, about as hard as she can go, right into her knees. Psst. Bam. No, 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 no. And that little child is gearing up with those pedals. She's on her third run, and not one person thought, maybe we should correct the child. The pastor's wife just kind of moved her knees and just slid out of the way. The child was patted and taken in to get cookies, and I was thinking, oh. I'm American. I got news for you. I'm going to watch this about one more time. And I'm thinking, no, 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 I'm about to get in trouble here. So, <laughs> but would you have let your child on a tricycle no. deliberately? I'm, I mean, no. I'm not talking an accident. I'm talking about deliberate. Find an adult and ride hard into their knees and then back up and prepare for the second assault. 
Would anybody in here do that? No. Well, if you do, you're going to need a dose of some Holy Ghost. <laughs> because there's an order. And there's a godliness. Children, obey your parents. For this is right in the Lord. That you will live long upon this earth. There's that word. That to honor and respect. While we can still do these kind of things. But in Europe, they don't believe in that. The children have an equal vote with the parents. So the seven-year-old has the same vote you do. Because it's socialized. So we all agree what's good. If the children want to do it, we do it. Now if you run your house like that, you're going to have chaos. Uh -huh. Because there's order. If the, you decide what's going to be taught in the church and not the pastor, and you decide you want this and you want that, you want, <coughs> wait a minute, you want bingo. You don't want a lot of worship. You just want bingo. You want a coffee bar in here. And you want pizza. And you really don't want so much preaching. Because you really don't really want that. You really want sports. We're just going to put sports on screen up here. And we're going to have maybe a little verse handed out up there. We're going to have pizza, popcorn, coffee, and sports. And that's church. Now, is God going to be really happy with that? He put a man of God over a house of God with a word of God to bring up a people. Well, when that thing gets out of order, is, is it going to produce healthy Christians? Is that going to produce healthy both people to grow up to be responsible law-abiding citizens? No. Because if they don't obey their teachers, are they going to obey laws? No. Are they going to be responsible at anything? No. So what you have is you have these patterns that are being set in place, but there's fruit in the patterns. And the fruit that comes up is not good fruit, and you're not going to like it when it gets there. Because the Word of God is truthful. It's forever true. It's forever strong. It's forever faithful. And the Word of God in our lives will produce righteousness. It will train us up. It will prepare us for things to come. And we will be steadfast like trees planted by the rivers of water. We will stand when everybody else runs, fails, compromises, and says, you know, it's going to be okay, Jess. Get your tricycle out again. Mm. <laughs> And you're going to sit back and say, is this the holiness of God? Is this the righteousness of Him? Is this the goodness of God we've been hearing about? No, it's not. So you need to be in a box. If I say this to you, I don't want you to be offended, but where you sit is a matter of life and death. The preaching that you sit under is life and death now. Mm -hmm. Because there is a word that caters to the flesh and will produce the whirlwind. And then there's a word that you will hear that will be sown in the Spirit, after the Spirit, that will produce righteousness. So if you like the flesh, because it caters to the better message, you know, better, 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 me, 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 and you run to that fellowship because it's all about me, but it's not about Him, and it doesn't talk about a day that's coming, and the wrath of God that's going to be poured out, and the precious things of God that He's wooing us to, then it's going to be really comfortable for you in those places because nothing is going to change. None of the unholy relationships or problems, they're not going to change because they don't have to change. They can all come in and sit in the pew. But there is a righteousness and there is a holiness and God is calling a people, a people to himself for the end. And he's telling them, there is a covenant. I'm a covenant-keeping God. And if I send you, and if I tell you to do something, and you hear from me and you do it, I'll be with you, I'll protect you, and I'll keep you. One last thing this morning. I've been watching who's going into Syria. You know that mess that's going on over there. I don't believe we should take the Syrian Muslims in. I'm sorry. I believe we should help the church. Does the church send them back to the Muslim countries? I, hope, I believe we should help them with food, but I don't believe we need an Islamic America. I just don't believe it. I don't believe that. I believe our freedom and liberty in Christ is very precious and we need to guard the gates a bit against change. And I've been watching what's going on in Europe. If you're foolish, if you don't watch it, the Syrian Muslims are causing trouble in Europe. You need to pay attention. You want to be a Syrian refugee? Give me $2,000 and I can get you a Syrian refugee passport right now. You want a better apartment, better freebie stuff? I can get it for you. Give me some money. I'll get you Syrian. In other words, the Syrian refugees are not Syrians. Did you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They're not Syrians. Glory to God. Glory to God. But God, this was the message. I've been looking at ministries that are going in to minister to those wonderful people that are in the press of people. And I was in North Carolina meeting with some pastors, and they were telling me about, they had a church where 
a lot of their people were going other places to hear a different message because there were other things being preached. So some of their main people were leaving, going to those places because it was so much easier to be in those churches. So we were having those talks. With this wonderful pastor said, Kathy, you won't believe who came into our church. There's a young man that heard from the Lord that he was to go to Syria. Do you know that going into Syria with that mess going on, we'd really have to hear from God right about now? So this young man must have heard from God, and he must have counted the cost, who was here for the Hineni talk. Okay. So he really believed he heard from God. And he probably didn't ask everybody's approval, but he went. And when he got there, he didn't know why he was going. He didn't know any of it. He just knew he was supposed to go. So he had to hire some Muslim men to take him in, because that's who's in that country. They don't really have a lot of Christians over there now, to take him in. And they knew how dangerous it was going to be, so they pulled. They had an old truck, and they pulled up the floorboards, and somehow they got him in, and they had a hidden compartment. They put it, and they went into Syria. And they hadn't been gone very far when five commandos in those kind of uniforms that you're seeing on television now with machine guns stopped them and stopped the truck and said in Arabic, bring out the Westerner. And the Muslims said, we don't know what you're talking about. We don't have a Westerner. And then they put the guns at everybody. They said, we're going to shoot all of you unless you give him up. We know as soon as he came into the border, we knew he was here. We wanted him. So they went to the back, pulled up the floorboards, and they pulled out that American man, the one who's in the church that these pastors are telling me about. He came to their church to give this testimony. So it's secondhand, now it's thirdhand, but they told me, and it was firsthand. It's Kathy, they pulled him out. And there he is, standing in front of them, and all of those men have those machine guns, and they're pointing at them, and this is what the captain said to them. Are you a Western? Yes. He said, are you a Christian? Now, he has a choice right here and now. He can say, he said, yes. He said, I had a dream last week, and a man from the West was coming with a message. Do you have a message? And that young man preached the gospel to them. I feel the Holy Ghost to tell you right now. And the commander got saved. The one influential man that needed to hear the message got saved. They put the young man back in the truck, and they took him out of Syria. Now, that assignment was for one man. But that one man is the leader, and he's the commander which means he's the next person that, with the message. So can God do it? Yes, he can. Is he going to use ordinary? That's a, it's an ordinary guy. He doesn't have a ministry degree. He has the Holy Ghost, and he heard a word. And he, prepared, he probably prepared his heart that no matter what happens, I'm going to obey God. He didn't ask the cost. He didn't understand how it was going to work. He didn't have the plan. He had the Holy Ghost. And don't you know his knees were knocking when... They pulled up those boards, but when he testified in that church in North Carolina, I was thinking to myself, oh my goodness, how's God going to do this? Well, I'll tell you how he's going to do it. He's going to use ordinary people that sit in ordinary churches that will not compromise the everlasting word of God. They will stand on the truth. They won't back down. They're not looking for the flesh churches. They're not looking for the please me churches. They're not looking for what's good for me, how it's going to get better, how I'm going to get this. How... They're not looking for those churches. They're looking for churches that pour the word. And then the spirit of God is going to use some of these people on the word. And then God's going to have an assignment because he's got a great plan to save the Muslim nations. He does. And he will do it. But he's going to use ordinary people. Not that go in for the big ministry. Not that go in with the compromise. Not that go in for the big this and the big that. Need the Perrier water and the big $10,000 to show up. No. Those people have never gotten into that country. They have never gotten anywhere. But one man who trusted God, who was faithful, was used by God. And so it's going to be with you. 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 It's ordinary people now that God's raising up. But what he's raising you up on is this. And if I tell you anything today that's not the word of God, if I tell you anything today that doesn't line up and your spirit has strong, I freely invite you to get in the word of God. I will provoke you to study it. I will provoke you to look at the passages to prove me wrong because the whole thing is that I'm going to get you in the word of God. And if you disagree, disagree with me on the word, but on the other side of it, the treasure that's being put inside of you is a real word. It is not my word. I actually believe he's the adventure of the covenant and the covenant people. And he's going to move heaven and earth after 6,000 years to redeem that people. Remember? 
hard, stiff-necked, hard-headed, disobedient, if he'll do that for them, Christians, what will he do for the blood-bought Holy Ghost Christian who has the fear of God in him and the love of the Word of God and will not compromise? Will you be perfect? No. But here's what will change you. You'll read this word and the word washes you. <laughs> and then the Holy Ghost taps you. It says. And then blessings to the Lord Jesus Christ. You can change. It's just so sweet. You can change. <coughs> One word from the Spirit of God and you can change. Mm -hmm. He can do it in a moment, in a second. That's how powerful he is. So <coughs> praise God. He will carry you on eagle's wings. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty under his wings. <coughs> Do you read it? I call the rapture. I call the rapture Psalm, Psalm 91. He's able to protect you. He's able to keep you. He's able to send you. He's able to direct you. He's able to get you in. He's able to get you out. He's able to do it in your business, in your neighborhood, in your home. He's able. He's more than able. And we belong to Him. We're standing on this Word. Now church, we're in a day and time where there's a church that is departing from the Word because they don't use the Word because they use all these cute, cute little gimmicky stuff. But there are plenty of people all over this country, all over this nation, that are just like this fellowship, that are rooted and grounded in this Word. They are praising and worshiping right now on this Sunday. You may not read about them on TV. You may not read them about but they're there. And I promise you that God is still pouring out His Spirit. God is still moving. God is still doing these things. And these fellowships are right here. And the prayers of these groups are restraining evil. Do you understand that? Yeah. The presence of God on the inside of us is restraining evil. And while we are here, while we are operating in the truth, while we are standing, while we are preaching, while we are praising, while we are worshiping, while we are confessing our sins... The presence of God will remain. When it comes to a time when we will not be accountable to this word, we will not, I believe the church will have to be removed, this church I'm talking about, because evil is restrained by the Holy Ghost in the Holy Ones. That's us. Your prayers are what's restraining 9-11 attacks on this country. It's the prayers of the faithful. And even though everybody else doesn't believe it, I believe it. I believe that when a righteous man or woman walks in, parents, if your kids are planning mayhem, let's just say somebody's planning something late at night, got some friends, maybe keg or something, they're planning it with their little telephone, cell phones, whatever. When you step in, what happens? Cell phones go quiet, telephones get off, everybody kind of calms down. You interrupt because the presence of God inside of you restrains evil. When a righteous man steps into a bar, when there's every unrighteous activity going on, what happens? That's exactly right. When a righteous mother has it in her heart that something's going on in her kids' lives, <laughs> and she's up in the Holy Ghost, and she says, I'm not so happy with some of these friends, what happens, parents? The righteousness of God on the inside of us is restraining evil. Can you afford to play with the Word of God? Can you afford to go to places where they don't preach the Word of God. Can you afford, Christians, to get watered down, fluffy, fluffy, fluffy? Oh, you are just I'm so good. Oh, my goodness, you've been with five women, but it's just okay. It's all right. It's all right. It's all right. It's just all right. Just come on into the household of God. Oh, no, 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 God doesn't care about that stuff. You're just good, good, good. Will that kind of preaching bring righteousness into your heart? Will that kind of preaching stir up the Spirit of God on the inside? Will that kind of teaching... Leadership, will it prepare you to stand? Are there any Christians left in America? I say yes. Are there any real Christians that will stand on his word, that will vote for godliness, that will vote for the Bible? I say yes. Our children and our friends need to see those Christians. They need to see that. It's going to cost you. 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 But the rewards... But the rewards, but the rewards. The Bible says that what you do on earth is how you reign in heaven. Did you know that? What you do on earth is preparing you to reign in heaven. And there's different places. And what you stand for here is what you will reign for there. And what you will not stand for here 
you will not reign for there. Isn't that amazing? Mm -hmm. So what you do on earth is precious to the Lord. What you do here is precious to Him. And Broken Chains Church, you are precious to Him. There are Bible-believing fellowships like you all over the United States. We may not know them, and we certainly may not read them, but they are impacting the kingdom of darkness. They are advancing the kingdom of Jesus Christ. And it may not look, it may not get the big magazine right up in the big television ministry, but it's still happening. Don't you, don't you think it's not? It is. Because these people are godly. They're not blowing their own trumpets. They're not getting the big, the big endorsement. May not, they may not be doing those things because they have another agenda to please the one who died for them to let him increase. The Bible says we decrease that he might increase. We don't increase because when we increase, what happens? That's exactly right. Hallelujah. So precious church, I just thank you for letting me come. This is my heart. That was just the last time. And what I was trying to tell you is God can reveal something to you in the word yet. It's not old. It's not out of fashion. It's not obsolete. It's a living right now word. And I can't tell you why he does it. I think it's just his favorite. But it's also your hunger. And as you press into the word and you study things, he can drop one thing in. And what you couldn't see, you can now see. And you can see you're not a blind anymore in that area. He's still revealing mysteries. But it's his word that he's doing it in. And for me, I can't wait to go. I can't wait. I can't wait because now I know when you go to a place to minister, you have to ask God to give you your giving. But you have to remember, you're getting. And if you ever get so arrogant that you're not able to get because you're up here and somebody's here, you're not going to get what God has for you. Because when you give, you also receive. And that's spiritual truth. And that's what I'm learning now. I pray whenever I go that I won't leave before I get the revelation I'm supposed to get. That I give what's... I can't actually give something that's not on my heart. I can only give you what I have in my heart. But if I give what I give, then I'm going to get what I'm supposed to get. I'm gonna, Pastor, come on up here. Come on up here. You're a blessed family. You've got a wonderful leader. He's uh, sacrificing his body right now, I hear to be your leader, going through some hard things, which she's sharing with you, to give you the ability to be open when you run into hard things. You can freely share them too because you've got a body that's a Christ. It's a family. And I'm encouraging him sometimes to give you some information so you know how to pray, so you know how to come alongside, so you know how to lift up his hands. He probably shouldn't be carrying 70-pound suitcases. Does anybody think that would be right? Amen. And if you catch him doing it, you need to say something to him. He shouldn't be doing it. Amen. Glory to God. Because right now, the body is taking care of the body. And then he'll be able to do it again, but he's asking you to be the covenant keepers with him. I think that's a righteous thing. I think it's righteous to help people in covenant. Covenant forever. He's forever good. He's forever powerful. And his word is forever true. Pastor Brian, I'm turning this back over to you. Amen. Wasn't it so good to have Sister Kathy this morning? Amen. We're blessed to have her with us today. And for those who don't know, that those remember last time, we'd have to have, keep her here like three weeks just to get the she has such phenomenal teaching Amen. And on the end times and and uh, I encourage you to dig in more. And uh, she has a great way of tying in. For She made a lot of statements this morning. And if you were here last time she taught, she backed all those statements up with uh, the word and facts. So she has them. And she has a website called uh, Connected with the Connected to the Word. And you can go there and dig on those studies if you have any questions. And it will fill in those gaps. Amen. And... Uh, I just as she was speaking, there was one thing that uh, I wanted to continue on the thought, and the Holy Ghost uh, took her another direction, and she dropped a few nuggets, and I want I want to add to those. And one of those is is that you know 
after the tribulation period, uh, it's not just the Jews that get a second chance. It's all the heathens that decided to play games with God. And there's going to be a whole bunch of those that are going to get that opportunity. But, and it's going to be a great harvest, but they're going to, if you think you're going to have it rough before tribulation, you ain't seen nothing. I'm going to encourage you to stay out of that camp. It's going to be rough. But I also want to encourage you, because I, I know she in no way intended this, but uh, the Lord would much rather have the Jewish people come to him before them. It's our job as believers to witness to them. Absolutely. Get them saved, set free, and delivered, and catch us and catch the first ride out of here. Amen. 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 And so, if you see someone, don't go. Well, he's coming back for you later. I'll just leave you alone. <laughs> no, they need Jesus, and they're going to have to choose him sometime or another. They can still reject him later, and they'll be left in an even bigger mess if they if they keep saying no. Amen. Amen. So, I just want to encourage you today that, uh, uh, listen, I can't add anything to what she said. I just want to encourage you all, catch the first ride out. Amen. And that means uh, get your stuff together now. The bells are sounding. Uh, the day of the Lord is a thousand years. He could come back a thousand years. Man, he could come back tomorrow. But I can tell you this. His word said to always be looking and always be ready. And that's not a fearful thing. That's a joyful thing. Amen. And if you're ready, you don't have to worry about getting ready. See, people that worry about getting ready is because they know they're doing something wrong. So if you're worried about when he's trying to figure out when he's coming, it's because you're not ready. Come on, I'm just I'm giving a little... So this morning, I want to encourage you, once you get ready, you don't have to worry about it so much. You can just be excited about when he's coming, and then you can be about the Father's business trying to get as many with you as you can to go on the first ride. And that's what he left us for here to do. But uh, it's only going to be those that, that are full of the Word of God, that know the Word of God, that are not going to be easily swayed or easily deceived in these last that's days. Exactly. And you're going to have to know it. You know, I can put it into you, I can teach you, but I can't, I can't make you process it on a daily level. And you're going to have to have a daily relationship with it. Mm -hmm. And if you're around here long enough, I'll, I, I'll try to hornswoggle you into that. I'm pretty good at it. Can I get an amen? Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Because it's, that's life. So I just want to encourage you this morning as, as you're getting ready to go out. I believe God has chose you all for such a time as this. I really don't care anything. I really just wanted to share those nuggets this morning. And, uh, you know, and being ready, is, it, it's not that hard. Amen. It's simply saying yes. Amen. Yes, God. When the Holy Spirit comes and convicts you, just say yes. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. And this morning, if you're here and he's dealing with you, I just want to give you an opportunity just to say yes. If you realize that you're not where you're supposed to be, doing what you're supposed to be doing, there's no condemnation, just say yes. Be ready. If that's you this morning, I just want you to be real bold. Raise your hand and we'll pray with you. There will be some other things we're going to pray about. The Bible said if you're ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. I don't want to, when, when, it's, when it comes for the first trip, I don't want him to be ashamed of me. Amen. There's a whole group of churches he talks about that are going to, he's going to be ashamed of. I don't, I'm going to do my best not to be in that boat. Amen. I'm going to hear, I want to hear, well done, thou good and faithful servant. Yeah. So if you're hearing him say yes this morning, just if he's dealing with you, just say yes. You know, yes means I surrender all. Yes. If that's you, just boldly put your hand up. I see that hand. I see that hand. Anybody else going to be bold? I see that hand. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. All right, Holy Spirit, what do you want us to do with this man? I'm going to have you be bold. If you really want to say yes completely to God this morning, I'm going to have you. I'm going to have you come down front. We're going to pray with you. We're going to lay hands on you.
Just come if you really want to say yes to God. Just come on down. I'm gonna make another prayer, another opening for the altar. But you just come on down and wait.